I'm Andy Chanley from 100.3 The Sound, and we're the home of the Sound's Healthy Dads Challenge, where I promised you that we would bring some people along the way to offer some advice and encouragement, some experts. Well, meet Mia Hamm, Olympic gold medalist and international soccer icon. Do I deliver or what? Uh, it's good to have you here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Now, you first of all, I want to uh, get this uh, on the table. You are actively engaged right now in a campaign that does exactly this kind of thing, gets people off their butts and, and exercising yeah. as families. Tell me a little bit about this. Well, I'm teaming up with LeapFrog in their Fit Made Fun Day, and that's going to happen Saturday, September 6th, out at uh, Santa Monica Beach um, from 1 to 4, and we're encouraging kids from the age range of 6 to 8 to come out with their families. And it's really about motivating them to get up and get active and have fun doing it. Uh, so we'll have a DJ playing music. We'll be having healthy snacks out there. And actually, we're going to be trying to break a couple Guinness Book of World Records um, with over 300 kids, you know, jumping on one foot, doing <laughs> sand angels, uh, doing the swim dance, which I'm excited to learn. But it's really about um, doing this and sharing with your kids the importance of being active as a, at a young age and hopefully that'll carry through uh to Adulthood. their adult years yeah yeah uh, i love uh, there's uh, with the leapfrog there's a leap band and there are other others right. that have come around with like fitbit and you know other brands and so forth i like this one because it has the little like the little pet yeah the kids and it specifically uses technology to engage them and bring them off of their video gaming couch and, and getting active. Yeah, I mean, LeapFrog has always been about education and, and making it fun for kids. And I think um, with the Leap Band, their activity, you know, wearable activity tracker, it's really getting kids to take ownership of their own activity, but, but making it in an environment where they enjoy it. It's not work for them. Right. You know, it's simple things, jumping up and down or wiggling like a worm or um, popping like popcorn. And it's got an accelerometer, so they're able, you know, the device is able to see that you're actually moving. You can't sit in a chair and just hope to win these jewels for your virtual pet. That's great. Um, so I, I, I love this fact because as a mom, you know, I was a professional athlete. I mean, I was active from day one. And then people told me what to do, you know, that I was going right. to go out. and Trainers. this, yeah, yeah, this is the practice. This is how you're going to eat. And, and so, so you're your kids' trainers. Well, in a way. but at the same time, you want to set good examples for them. And, and I think, you know, if they see you sitting down watching TV, eating junk, I shouldn't expect them to do anything different. So really trying to motivate my kids to get up and be active and understand that, you know, that'll help them in school. That'll help right. them socially in terms of how they feel about themselves, but their mental sharpness, their focus <clears throat> and, and their energy level. I know I don't have to read Mia's resume, but I mean, a few things right off the top. Uh, Olympic gold medalist, FIFA World Player of the Year, two years in a row, the first couple of years they, they even gave it. Uh, Pele handpicked you as one of the greatest living uh, soccer players. Looking back at your upbringing when you were a kid, is there anything that you think was pivotal to helping you achieve some of those things? Was there anything that your parents did? Well, I... Yeah, you know, my mom was a ballet dancer, so first and foremost, we ate very well. Like, I I remember, you know, we never had iceberg lettuce. It was always spinach salads or green leaf lettuce. I mean, um, never really had sugar cereals, like all these things, just because I think she almost felt if it was in the house, she would be tempted. I love that that your choices are indulging in iceberg lettuce <laughs> versus <laughs> versus uh, playing it safe with uh, spinach. Well, um, my mom always said all of that is is water. It's just <laughs> so I'm like, all right. Um, but you know, my dad was active either coaching our teams or on weekends he was out refereeing soccer games so we could actually afford to play. I mean, I was one of six kids in a military house. Um, I had an older brother who I just idolized and wanted to be like, and he was constantly running out the door, going to play uh, with his friends, whatever neighborhood game was going on. Um, I was, you know, chasing him down the street to, to be a part of it. 
So let me ask you about when you were training. In, you know, in our 20s, where they say age 27 is like the, the height of our physical powers, right? right. And after that, it's, <laughs> you tend to slow down. When you were training, at the, the peak of it, what do you think your, your highest like calorie intake every day was? Um, probably between three and four. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Now, looking at, you know, uh, uh, getting older, I, you know, I'm finding that my metabolism is, is slowing down and you look great, but have you had, you know, after, after you're not training for, uh, you know, Olympic gold anymore, has that been a challenge for you to say, okay, I really need to put the brakes on or have you always been sensible about it? No, I... I have, and and that's been the hardest thing. One is because I love food, um, and my husband and I joke every day that we wake up to play for the tie. So we we go and we work out, and we're hoping the calories we burn kind of equal the calories we intake. And um, but yeah, it's it's been a big life change because, like you said, constantly I knew I was working out four to six hours a day. Yeah. So it was more about making healthy choices that gave me the fuel to, you know, reach peak performance. And, and now I really have to look at what I'm taking in and um, making sure it's the right choices. And not just for me anymore, but for my kids. You know, right. what am I putting on their plates at night? Because, you know, they're not cooking for themselves. They're not going and, and buying the groceries at the store and um, just making sure that they have healthy, sustainable foods that that um, get them through the day and and give them the best kind of environment to grow and learn. See that, my, like my wife, uh, my son has scarcely eaten something that wasn't uh, homemade and or organic since he was born. He's almost four, and he can already take a punch. I mean, he's he's a, <laughs> a, a he's a stout kid, and I owe it. Like almost all to what she's fed him and, and breastfeeding and, and, and those things. Um, when you're dealing with your own kids, uh, I mean, I guess her uh, philosophy is they can control how much they eat. Right. I'm going to control what they eat. Has that been kind of? Yeah. But at the same time, like I don't want to make everything taboo because I remember growing up um, when I got to college, I think all I my first time in the grocery store on my own, I just went and bought every sugar cereal known to man that I was Being never... the freshman 15 or yeah, <laughs> just, just because I wasn't, you know, we just didn't have them in the house, but all my friends had them. So I want, I want my kids um, to, yeah, that sugar's fun and it tastes good, but it's, it's not going to help you sustain that energy that you need throughout the day. Right. And, um, you know, that you can have... The days where you celebrate, you know, go get ice cream, go have pizza, but you can make really healthy foods that are great and taste even better. So I think it's just kind of holding their hand and walking them through it. Can you believe that it's been 15 years this summer since the win over China? Uh, 1999. Every time I look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't see it. Yeah. Uh, how many, I'm just out of curiosity, how many times uh, a week does someone come up to you and say, I loved it when you ripped your jersey off? Yeah, they do. And then I go, but that, that wasn't <laughs> me. That was yeah. <laughs> um, and I always say, you know, if I had her abs, I'd, I would still be walking <laughs> around without a shirt off. But no, it's the excitement and the memories that that brought people and obviously for us participating was tremendous and um, you know anyone that wants to talk about that experience I'll, I'll sit down for hours and and share it with them because it uh, it changed all of our lives forever and um, I'm just grateful that we were given that opportunity not just for us but for young girls that were st- sitting in the stands young moms who were like gosh I just wish I had had that opportunity yeah. and now their daughters um, have the potential to do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So, uh, no secret, you're married to, uh, no more Garcia Parra. Yeah. Um, what, four different teams. Who do you guys root for on the spot? Right, na- right now, uh, Dodgers. Good. All right. Good yeah. answer. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm in this room. It's yeah. Good. Um, what kind of, give us a tip, what kind of snacks, you two professional athletes with kids, what kind of snacks are in your freezer? So when your kids say, Mom, I want something to eat, what do they, what do they go and find? Well, we have um, kind of Greek yogurt and we have fruit, a lot of fruit, 
Um, they love carrots. Uh, they love broccoli, pretzels. Um, you know, they staple for lunch is like a turkey sandwich, um, whole grain bread. They they seem to like that. But yeah, a cheese stick occasionally. Um, but that's that's kind of what we do. All right. Well, thanks so much for stopping by to share some of your, uh, you know, life, uh, your real life uh, situations with us, because we know that uh, people probably think it's so easy for you. No, I think no. it's easy for the both of you to, uh, you know, of course, your kids are going to be healthy. And, and but it's a it's a constant battle uh, to, to always make a, a sensible choice. So thanks for sharing that with us. And once again, if people want to find out more about the LeapFrog and the Leap Band, where can they go for that? They can go to the LeapFrog Facebook page and you can hashtag um, Fit Made Fun Day. And that'll link you to um, registering if you want to come out and you're between the ages of six and eight. We'd love to see you on Saturday, September 6th, one to four out at Santa Monica Beach. Awesome. And take the Sounds Healthy Dads Challenge. Mia Hamm, thanks for coming out and helping us today with some expert advice. Thank you.